Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Appenzell Ausserhoden, Appenzell Innerhosen, in Switzerland. Now, I already know you're thinking the title of this video just says Appenzell. What's happening here? What am I looking at here? Why does it have two names? Well, Appenzell is the traditional name for the region that we're going to talk about, but this region is actually made up of two cantons, which is the name for the regions of Switzerland. Appenzell Ausserhoden is up here, and Appenzell Nossen is down here. We'll talk about why they split in its history, but these two regions share so much that it just makes sense to put it all in one video. Otherwise, I'd be repeating 98% of the same thing in another video for the other canton. That's just silly, so we're going to talk about them both in one video. This region is nice and high in the Alps region. The actual Alps are a little bit further south here, but we'd get the fringes of the Alps definitely in uh, Inner Holden, but it's quite mountainy and hilly in Benzel Ausserhoden as well. It's one of those iconic parts of Switzerland, like think mountains of Switzerland. You've got the yodelers, you've got uh, cows, you know, pretty much anything when you think of Switzerland that's like stereotypical of like the Swiss mountains, you get it here. Uh, lots of beautiful mountain lakes and lots of hiking, uh, lots of caves, some really cool stuff up in the mountains there. Oh, and I should say, if you're wondering, it looks strange down here, but what's happening up here? Appenzell Innerhoden actually has two exclaves within Appenzell Ausserhoden. So let's, before we get any further, let's talk about what exactly happened in this little area here that made all of these strange borders. Originally, this was part of a Roman province called Raetia, but Obviously, the Roman Empire would fall over here and come under the powers of various um, powers, so to say. And this region came under the rule of the abbots of Saint Gaul. You can see Saint Gaul's right here. And the Abbey of Saint Gaul is a big, huge, beautiful church. But they controlled the region here. And after many years of overtaxation and lots of tithing by the, the poor farmers and shepherds here in the Alpenzell region, uh, they knew something needed to be done. Now, in the area we know as Switzerland today, uh, there's a lot of moving and shaking happening. A lot of people realizing that they don't actually have to follow all the rules of these monarchs and their fancy castles in France and what's now Germany and Austria. Uh, they can actually rise up and fight back. And there were many places within what's now Switzerland that they were actually being extremely successful, like surprisingly so. So in 1377, Appenzell, you can see this Appenzell, there's the town of Appenzell. Appenzell joined with the Swabian League, which was at the time um, the big powerful union of different cities and towns and things coming together to fight back against the people who were oppressing them. They with their own constitution and everything, they said, we are going to be uh, completely free from the abbots. Well, the abbot at the time went to the Habsburg family and said, listen, we need some military strength 
to get order back in here and get my land back. So the Appenzellers were like, oh dear, we need some help. So they went over to, I believe it's, it's pronounced Schweiz, which is how we get the word Swiss. Because um, the, the Swiss at the time were kicking butt, let's be real. They were dominating the battlefield. So they went to their fellow brethren and said, you need to help us because the Habsburg army is about to come marching on our little cow villages. We don't really stand a chance against them. So of course, the Swiss at the time were willing to fight anybody anywhere. And uh, the Appenzell Wars broke out in 1402. And what do you know, the Swiss fought them back. It took a while to assert their dominance here in the the mountains and valleys, but uh, by 1411, Appenzell had signed a defensive treaty with the Swiss, at the time that it was now the Swiss Confederation, because all of these little cantons were coming together to form one entity. Appenzell would eventually join in 1513, helping to create what we now know as Switzerland. And you would think, Problem is solved. They're now part of Switzerland, the Swiss Confederation. The abbot kind of conceded. St. Gall would eventually rise up on its own and join Switzerland like it is today. But that's a story for another time. You would think happy ending for this region, but you would be wrong because something else was brewing in the 1500s at that time and it was the Reformation. It wasn't just, we need to do something about this abbot. It became, we need to do something about the entire structure of the Catholic Church. And uh, Protestantism came into the region in the 1520s and was riling up some people and the, their police force at the time were going to do various, I don't want to call them protests, they were more just like sermons, in a way, preaching against Catholicism and promoting a Protestant religion. And it was starting to get quite violent. So, the people here decided, before it turned into an all-out civil war, to have a vote. A vote on which reasons would be Catholic, would remain Catholic, and which reasons, my goodness, which regions would convert to Protestantism. And in 1529, Ausserhoden officially converted to Protestantism, and Appenzell in Ausserhoden remained Catholic. There was a little issue that there were some monasteries in what's now Appenzell Ausserhoden, and that's how we get these little exclaves. They were officially made in 1870 as part of Appenzell in Ausserhoden very convoluted. There were a bit of conflicts after this division was made, but not like a massive, massive civil war that could have happened, right? Like what happened in many places like France. Um, it was, there were skirmishes, there were battles, but nothing too destructive. And honestly, the last of like the major, major news because like I said, these are people herding their cows and just doing little quaint village things up in the mountains, yodeling and all that. I would say the only real major news to come out of here is the women's right to vote. Now, um, Appenzell, the town of Appenzell in particular, has had this long tradition on how voting works, and it's how they got the vote to split the regions, even. They have something that I'm going to absolutely butcher. I found while researching, I can't pronounce Swiss places to save my life. <laughs> absolutely not. So I think it's called the Landsgemeinde? Landsgemeinde? I'm guessing. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Actually, correct me. I know I'm wrong. 
lens kind of, I think. And this is how they would vote. They would gather in the village square on the last Sunday of April. All the men of the town would come together and uh, debate certain topics, and they would vote by raising their family sword. So, once countries around the world started to allow women the right to vote, the people here did not quite want to change because they had been voting the same exact way since like the 1300s, right? They didn't want to break that very old, timely tradition. But uh, modernization would win out. But much later than you think. Appenzell Osserhoden allowed women to vote in 1989. Appenzell Hoden allowed women to vote for the first time in 1991. So, when you read the stats about how Switzerland didn't allow women to vote until 1991, it's like, wow, it's such a progressive country all through its history, except for women voting. It's a lot more complicated than it wasn't so much that they didn't want women to vote, and they didn't want to make all these, you know, huge changes. Well, the thing is that they didn't want to make all these huge significant changes to their tradition that they've had for so, so, so long, right? They wanted to preserve that. But, um, I assume that the longer that it went on for, the more debatable it became, the more archaic it felt. And there's no reason to not allow women. So now, they still have this voting system. They still gather in the last Sunday of April to debate and vote on issues. It's just now everyone is welcome to have their voice heard and allowed to vote, which is quite nice. And that's about it for history, I think. I think I've talked about everything I wanted to. So let me grab my tablet and show you some of these really cool places. All right. So right now I have Penzel Auserhoden highlighted here. And um, you can see how Penzel's right there. So this is the Auserhoden right up in here. But let me zoom out first so you can see exactly where we are in the world. We are in, I don't know if you'd call this Western Europe or Central Europe. I guess this is more Central Europe, right? This is Western Europe. Here we have Switzerland. There's Germany right up there. Austria. Italy and France. There's up in so. Let's take a look at this little slideshow here. How pretty, right? Very iconic architecture, rolling, beautiful green hills. Let me move this up a bit. Beautiful mountains in the background there. It's a very pretty classic place, right? Very timeless. Very lovely. Oh, what a sweet Russian river going through the town there. A beautiful mist in the morning. They're bringing their goats down and look at their very traditional clothes there. It's all very quaint and sweet. golden hour. And yeah, iconic hiking up in the mountains. You can see the largest city in Penzel, Osserhoden. I've been not saying, because I'm not quite sure how to say it in American English. I think it's Harisau. I'm not sure. But, um, put this in 3D so you can see the landscape. Very, very rolling mountains, right? We have a Hundweiler over here, but that's in Inhold. So we'll look at that in a minute. So not quite the, uh, the big powerful Alps, right? We're in the tail end of the Alps here, where it's starting to slope down into uh, Western Europe, like um, Germany and so, mountainous, but not, you know, mountains. How do I get, there we go. I just have to mash the 2D button a million times. 
idea. We stretch all the way up to here. You can see the exclaves here. So let's look at a pencil in our Holden. I have to type it in so you can see it. Uh, pencil in our Holden. And let's look at the slideshow for this place. I'd show you all the slideshows of the little towns, but the best pictures of them are on the main slideshow. Oh, that's so nice. Imagine waking up here in the morning, enjoying the beautiful, beautiful views. Very quaint buildings, little statues in the center of the towns, little markets and shops little chateaus and old, old, old churches. Remember, this is the traditional Catholic part. You can see a sweet little restaurant here. Let me make this a little less crooked for you guys, I'm sorry. Little hotel. Beautiful valleys, right? Very sweet, sweet buildings here. Oh, isn't that the most beautiful photo we've ever seen? That looks like a painting. I mean, it is a photo with lots of filters, so that's why it looks like a painting, but like this is a real place. The little cows in the, in the valleys here. The cute little buildings. It's so pretty. So, we have some really cool mountains. Um, which one should we look at? I guess I promised you Hundweiler. that is. Oh my gosh. Up at the top of the hill there. It's all snow covered. So, oh how sweet. <laughs> the places here all kind of have very similar slideshows, right? Quaint little towns, sweet cows, little lodges here. So it's like if you've seen one, you've seen them all, but I do highly encourage you to go look at the others in your own free time. And the little cows in the valley. Very traditional down here. Um, we can see... Oh, but don't have it highlighted anymore. Let me go. So you can actually see these exclaves yourself. Up here. The town of Oberg there. So yeah, little monastery regions up here. Sorry. That are part of an surrounded by a Benzema Sunday. There is one place I really want to show you because I know the name Apenzo because of a very famous place that I've always wanted to go to. And it's over here. And I want to make sure you can actually see the perspective here. Maybe if I put the 3D on. We're on a mountain, okay? Look at that slope. Straight down. We are on a mountain mountain. That is a very severe drop. And uh, on this hiking trail here, there's a little, um, we, like a ski lift kind of thing to take you up here. That stops up here, but lots of hikes around here. And there's lots of things to see. First, I want to show you this really cool little chapel. And you can kind of see the example of what kind of landscape we're talking about here. It is very sheer drop. There's lots of cool little caves here that people have built. All kinds of things inside this, like I said, is a little chapel. There's a little bell inside this really cool cave system. Very, very neat. There's the cable car, that's the word I'm looking for, going up the mountain so you can see it all for yourself. But here's what I want to show you. How pretty. The sheer drop there. The Asher restaurant and lodge is around here. I hope this is the right slideshow so I can show you this really iconic building. Probably not, to be honest. This was flick. Yeah, this isn't the slideshow I want to show you, but it's still very cool. I need to type it in. This. Here we go. 
biggest house in the mountain. So this is a very iconic building. There's the beds, but we find some yummy food. Come on, there it is. This is what I want to show you. When I hear Appenzell, this is what I think of. This building here, built onto the mountain. Like it has three walls. The fourth wall here is the mountain. And you have to hike up to reach this little lodge. And you can stay there for the night and eat some good, yummy Swiss food. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful place. There's a big cave. So yeah, I wanted to specifically show you this place. It's a locker. It's so lovely. <laughs> like I visit Switzerland someday. Absolutely, you bet I'm going here. Look at that. Okay, first of all, what is that? Is it like a dessert? Kind of looks like it. I mean, it'll, I'll eat it. <laughs> it looks fine. I'm just not sure what it is. But yeah, absolutely amazing spot. But yeah, let's end it on one of these mountains here. How about this one? Let's look at these mountains as I close out the video. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we're going to hop over the border and head back over to Italy. And we are going to see some of the most incredible architecture. I mean, building a, a house on the side of a mountain is pretty cool, but about a domed house made out of rocks. You, you have to see it. I can't describe it. They're incredible little homes. So be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out and you'll feel like this guy here. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. Wow, look at those. And I hope that you have a good, 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 good night. Good night.